end of the 11th century. This was when the samurai class basically decided they had had enough. They found that the imperial courtiers and the court was very foppish, very frivolous. They did not like how they were running the country. They did not like how they were treating the samurai class in general. So they started a war because they actually had the backing of an imperial family member who is sympathetic to them. And so with war comes cultural change. And after the war they took power. And with that cultural change comes fashion change. And here again you see the pants of the young ladies and the married women. And this was something higher upper class women who weren't peasants who are. This would have been samurai and courtier. But because the court women would spend so much time layering and fussing over their kimono, and the samurai women just didn't have the time and the means to do it, not to mention they were more practically minded being from a warrior class, that they decided to forego the multiple layers. Uh, even though Juni Hitoe translates as 12 layer kimono, I have seen paintings and reproduction costumes with over 25 layers on them. So this was considered excess to the point of waste. To the point of just being unacceptable by the samurai class. So for the everyday wear, they started wearing what was basically the underwear of the upper class. Because the white kimono, even though you see another layer underneath of it on the collars, and the long hakama, even though you're fully covered, these were considered the petticoats and the hoop skirts of the 11th century court. You did not go out of your bedroom in this. You did not let anybody but your dressing maid and maybe your lover see you in this sort of clothing. And actually, this isn't an uncommon phenomenon. You will see it in other cultures where in the United States, for example, some of you may do the steampunk or the lowly fashions, you'll see things like the old-fashioned swimming suits. Those were really cute, they covered your whole body, and then a one-piece, even for the 1950s, would have been considered beyond inappropriate, downright sluttish by Victorian standards, but it's now standard outdoor public wear. So fashion changes and oftentimes things that were considered undergarments end up becoming fashionable outerwear. And then, even though they did not care for the multiple layers, the samurai women did still put at least one or two extra layers on top of that for formal occasions. If it was New Year's or a wedding, that sort of thing. Or if you were meeting a high-ranking lord. And as time progressed, they found the pants to be uncomfortable because you saw how long they were mm -hmm. and they also became a fire hazard because with all the earthquakes Japan is very prone to going up in flames <laughs> and there were quite a few notable deaths in the 11th century of women who were caught in palace fires because the imperial palace burnt down more times than I can count in the 11th century due to the fact that everything in Japan is made of paper and when you are trying to run through all this in pants that trail past your feet, two, three feet at least, you're prone to getting tangled in your kimono, so it became very impractical. So you didn't see it as much. It went out of style. And then you started seeing the smaller obis and the smaller sleeves, because if you looked at the 11th century kimono, the sleeves were much wider and they were open. And they started closing the sleeves at this point, even on the outerwear because the sleeves of the under kimono that they were wearing with the hakama were closed and this became kisode, meaning short-sleeved. And again we have this outer layer and it's finally starting to be called uchikake, but it differs from the 11th century layered robes in that it's very thick. It's made of a heavy damask or brocade, it's embroidered, and if you look and, and throughout time there's a piece of cotton hemming or tubing on the end that could get up to two or three inches thick on the hem because you weren't meant to hike up your kimono with an uchikake. 
This was meant to trail behind you on the tatami mats. So the weight on the back allowed you to, tra to trail elegantly. And then we also have the menswear. Again, you see the shorter pants because the samurai class was very practical. And you start seeing the outer kimono tucked in with the sleeves. They're still wide here because this is still 11th century style. But it's gotten tighter and you see the crossed collar and it's less formal. And the silk is actually a little bit rougher. And you start seeing imperial, um, what is the word I'm looking for, crests on here. Well, actually not so much imperial, but samurai family crests. And also the kimono would not necessarily have all been made of silk. You would have had the hemp and even cotton blends because the samurai didn't have the time to waste with their tailors the way the imperial nobles did. And then with the shorter sleeves came a very Japanese form of wearing a kimono. This is